and I'm 20 years old. When I was 18, I discovered bacteria that can biodegrade plastics. Some of you might not be familiar with the concept of biodegradation. What I found was that bacteria can secrete enzymes outside of their cells or take, take plastics or plastic chemicals into the cells and chemically transform plastics into carbon dioxide and water. Today, vast ocean ecosystems are at the brink of complete collapse because of plastic pollution and other irresponsible human ways of living. Our fate depends on how we approach, debatably, the greatest challenge in human history. Before I talk about the, the solutions I have to propose, I want to tell a story of why I came to care about plastic pollution. I grew up in Vancouver, Canada, which is most well known for its sustainability and natural beauty. And being in this city, it was difficult for me to imagine what destruction of the ecosystem because of the wasteful ways a human life could look like. My moment of realization came when I visited a local landfill in junior year of high school. It looked like this. Although the stench of rotting debris and the toxic, dusty air disgusted me, what caught my attention was that an astounding amount of garbage was made of plastic waste. And at this stage, the plastics no longer resemble the perfect geometric shapes that you're all familiar with seeing. They, they become tiny, ripped-up pieces that, be, that are inseparable from the rest of the landfill. This is the first glimpse I had into the afterlife of plastics on land. When I came home, I found more images that look like this one on the internet. And I realized that plastic pollution doesn't only affect land, but it's really taking effect in every single place on our planet. At that moment, I wish that the reality presented in front of me was not real. But the evidence was irrefutable. About a week later, I came up with an ambitious idea. I asked, is it possible for us to use bacteria to break down plastics? After all, bacteria and other micro microbial decomposers break down all organic matter in the environment. They can convert apple cores into, into things that become dirt. Everything is in a cycle. With this idea, my best friend and I became involved in, res in research at our local university. And within four months, we found that hundreds of bacterial strains isolated from merely two soil samples um, have the natural mechanism for breaking down plastics. In 2013, we presented our ideas at the TED conference, and we told people, nature is evolving to try to fix our problems, the problems that we have created. Bacteria have evolved to try to find a way to break down plastics. The least we can do is to invest in the search for solutions. So after I started college, I became more deeply involved in other aspects of science research related to plastics. In this first project, my lab looked at the effects of BPA exposure on the development of laboratory mice placenta. In the bottom two photos, you can see um, these are two placenta photos. So the placenta on the left belonged to a healthy mouse that was not exposed to any BPA. And the photo on the right belonged to a mouse that, that was fed BPA over an extensive period of time. A layer of tissue exists in the placenta that is responsible for the exchange of nutrients between the mother and child. And this layer of tissue is labeled L in both pictures, right above the dotted lines, if you can see. In photo A, you can see that this region is evenly distributed, and compared to the photo, photo B, that layer is deformed and greatly reduced in surface area. We have long known that plastic exposure is responsible or, or strongly correlated with many problems such as cancer and obesity. And here's the evidence to show you that plastic exposure can harm the development of children before they're even born. In a more recent um, project, I have been engineering bacteria that can not only break down plastics, but to clean our water pollution. In this field of synthetic biology, teams have engineered bacteria that can not only break down plastics, as, I, like, as I've described in the beginning, 
changing them to carbon dioxide and water, but they can also do many other cool things. For example, a team at the University College London engineered a strain of bacteria that can glue together pieces of microplastics and form aggregates in the ocean. Their vision is to create large synthetic plastic islands. Can you imagine one day receiving a phone call from a real estate agent asking you if you wanted to buy a new home in the middle of the Pacific Ocean um, on a plastic synthetic island that bacteria built where, where there was a high density of plastics? This might be a potential future. A lot of you might be curious about, you know, how does synthetic biology work? Is this ethical? And I'll try to explain what synthetic biology is. So in the 1960s, we figured out that even within the genome, genes have a hierarchy. Some genes control other genes. Genes are regulated. By knowing these rules, in all the decades that came after, we have figured out how to engineer the genome and to develop DNA sequences that we can put into bacterial cells in the form of plasmids or foreign DNA. So people have been able to make mouse glow green or bacteria glow green by taking in genes from glow-in-the-dark jellyfish and putting them to bacteria or mouse. We have also been able to do many other amazing things just using recombinant DNA technology. I want to now talk about the ethical perspective. Some of you might think, you know, what if we release all these bacteria into the environment? It's not going to be ethical. What if they take over the environment? And all I can say is, when we engineer these bacteria, we can put genes designed to make them pressure sensitive or light sensitive, so that when they come to the surface or, or go do something that we don't want them to do, genes are activated that will, that will turn on a kill switch within the cell, so that the bacteria can terminate themselves before they can become invasive species. As promising as these solutions are, I want you to know that our fate greatly depends on the choices that we all make. Choosing to ignore the problem is the same as choosing to endorse it. All of you are here today because you can make a difference that counts. You can choose to stop giving plastic bags to all of your consumers. You can choose to use materials like hemp instead of polyester or nylon. You can choose to promote awareness for this cause through your products and advertisement. I want you to know that this is really the problem of a generation and we don't have much time. I challenge all of you to confront the problem and to take action. Thank you.